Welcome to One Minute Bugs. G'day there. Have you ever found this foamy stuff on the plants in your garden? This frothy liquid is formed by sap-sucking insects known as spittle bugs. They are the nymphs, or the juvenile form, of insects classified in the family Cercopidae. The adults are known as frog hoppers. How do spittle bugs make this stuff? To explain it, we need a little botany revision first. <sighs> Don't worry, it'll make sense. The vascular system of plants includes phloem and xylem tissues. Xylem distributes water and dissolved minerals from the roots up through the plant to the leaves. Phloem carries solutions of nutrients, especially sugars synthesized in leaves, down to the roots and around the plant where needed. Most sap-sucking insects feed on phloem sap, which is high in sugar, hence the honeydew produced by many sap-sucking insects. Spittle bugs feed on xylem, which is watery and low in nutrients. To get what they need, spittle bugs suck a lot of sap and produce huge volumes of urine. How huge? Researchers reckon about 200 times their body weight every day. For the average human, that equates to about 10,000 litres per day. Dr Philip Matthews from the University of British Columbia suggests that we call these insects piddle bugs rather than spittle bugs. Yeah, probably right. But what about the bubbles? Spittle bugs use their abdomen as a snorkel. The spittle bug pokes the tip of its abdomen through the foam and draws air into a groove on the underside of its abdomen. The groove contains the nymph's abdominal spiracles, or in other words, its breathing holes. By submerging back into the fluid and contracting the abdomen, the bubbles are created. A spittle bug can completely cover its body with foam in about 15 minutes. But why do they produce it? For a couple of reasons, to prevent desiccation drying out and to prevent being eaten by other insects or birds. The foam keeps them hidden and apparently it has a bitter taste. We'll just have to take their word for that. I usually find spittle bugs at our place on this plant here. It's known as broom spurge, one of the natives that grows in this area. I collected a specimen from one of these plants and brought it into the lab for photography. I removed the foam so that we could see the insect underneath. As you can see, it is still producing fluid. Later, I returned it outside onto the same plant and within a very short period of time, it had recreated its foam home. Our spittle bug had wing buds, meaning it was about to molt one more time into the adult form. So I checked on that nymph until I noticed the foam beginning to dry out. In other words, it was no longer producing fluid and it had become an adult. I'd better grab it, I thought, so I can take a photo. So I grabbed hold of the plant where it was and within a split second, the adult was out of the foam onto my hand and springing away. Missed it by that much. I only had a brief glimpse of an adult. It was a rather squat insect, about six or seven millimetres long, and I think it's this species here. It's not surprising the adult form of spittle bugs are known as frog hoppers. They are one of the fastest jumping insects ever recorded. Accelerating at around 5,000 metres per second squared, they can jump as high as 70 centimetres. Not bad for a very small insect. A jet on an aircraft carrier flung from a catapult accelerates at a stately 30 metres per second squared. Spittle bugs are not particularly diverse in Australia. I think there are only about 20 species or so, but they have been around for a long time. The fossil record shows that the ancestors of the modern spittle bug, a group of insects known as Procercopidae, evolved during the Jurassic period. Yes, Trevor, we know you were around then too, but the Jurassic period wasn't just about you. To answer the question in the title, are spittle bugs pests? Not in Australia, they're not. They are just fascinating native insects. 
Just because an insect is feeding on a plant doesn't make it a pest. Here are some images I shot in Wiperfeld National Park a few years ago. There are quite a few spittle bugs on these plants and it's not a problem. In this close-up image here, you can see nymphal skins left over after the final molt. There were obviously several individuals underneath this foam here and the plants look just fine to me. But spittle bugs can be a problem in other countries because they can spread the bacteria Xylella fastidiosa, a plant pathogen. Xylella. Now there's a clue. It's a bacteria that develops in the xylem of plants and is only transmitted by xylem feeding sap sucking insects like spittle bugs. Biosecurity agents in Australia are on the lookout for this disease as well as their main vectors, which include the meadow spittle bug and the glassy winged sharpshooter. Gotta love that name. Neither of these insects or the disease occur here in Australia. Spittle bugs only have one generation per year and it looks like the spittle forming has finished here for the season. I guess I'll have to wait till spring next year to finally get an image of an adult um, because finding the spittle is an easy way to find the insect. But this time I'll be prepared for catapulting frog hoppers. If you'd like to learn about another fascinating native insect, check this video out here. Thanks for watching.